I love those titles. And you'll love Demon Knight. You're watching my good fiend, Roger Walker, on Slasher Pepper. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> Jason Goblet, of course. Not Dr. Pepper. What a surprise, what a twist. I got you there, didn't I? Um, I guess this is a doc, the Coca-Cola Diner. That's weird. I can't even pronounce it correctly. That's weird. Anyway, I ran out of Dr. Pepper. I mean, quarantine has me drinking Dr. Pepper every single day. So I guess uh, we'll have to do Coca-Cola now. I'm sorry that my hair is so fucking long. I'm, uh, I'm gonna go to the barber tomorrow, actually, because they're opening up again. But like, jeez, look at that shit. It's never been that long in the back. So what I'm gonna be doing today is, uh, the first episode of, uh, Tales from the Crypt Tuesday. And, uh, this is gonna be a series I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna start season one right now with this video. If you wanna read more information about Tales from the Crypt Tuesday and what it's gonna be, Information is in the description. We're gonna start off by reviewing Tales from the Crypt Demon Knight. This is one of my favorite films of all time. I love this film so much. It starts up with the Crypt Keeper being a director. Cut. Cut, 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 cut. But before I'm gonna start talking about this film and reveling on and on and on about it, I'm just uh, gonna read the synopsis from INDB. A man on the run is hunted by a demon known as the Collector. I love the concept. It's uh, I love the story, it's a great story, and the way it's, it opens up and like the whole mood and sort of atmosphere is really awesome. We even have like some metal music playing, which we'll get back to that later. Coca-Cola really isn't all that bad actually. <laughs> Billy Zane is the collector, he is fucking awesome in this film. The way he acts and the way his character is, it's so funny, it's really great. Like, it's, he's the best character from this movie, no doubt. I'll just show you this scene, like, as an as example of the, <laughs> what kind of character he plays. Fuck this cowboy shit! You fucking hold dunk, po dunk, well then there, motherfuckers! The way he delivers it is just perfect. And like the little dance, you know, and there are all sorts of scenes where he does shit like that, and it's so funny. He's a really charismatic villain, you know. William Sadler plays Breaker, and he's basically the 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 man on the run, and he is also really good. And I, it's actually funny that he's in this movie because he's also in a few episodes of the the series. He's even in one of my favorite episodes, the first one, "The Man Who Was Death." The story is very simple to follow and intriguing. And there are lots of awesome sequences. I even read in the book, Tales from the Crypt, the official archives, that the demons were supposed to be like actual like sort of businessmen, kind of like uh, the man in black. Then they were like, no, you can't do that, man. Like if one of the producers wanted that, the director was like, no way, that's gonna happen. Because, you know, it's a movie called Demon Knight. People want to see demons, not the man in black 4. I'm glad he said that because the demons look awesome. And I saw some of the pictures in the official archives of like behind the scenes. It was actually quite some heavy stuff, those suits, and they actually had to do stunts in them. And it's really impressive. There's like lots of wire work and stuff. Demons flying around throughout the house. The house is the, pl the place they stayed the entire movie. And uh, it's basically a good movie to watch during quarantine because the characters are isolated themselves too. I really love the ending as well. Um, especially the new Demon Knight, I guess, just walking off in the desert and like saying, I'll take the next one, I'll take the next bus, you know, and then just whistling the Tales from the Crypt theme song. That's so fucking hilarious, that's awesome. The soundtrack is fine, like playing in the background, nothing really extraordinary or anything, nothing that's like where you really when it's stuck in your head, like, after a movie. Except for the theme song, of course, that, uh... I mean, that song always gets stuck in your head, even... Especially when you've seen, uh, heard it so many times watching the TV show. There's also another soundtrack with songs by Pantera, Megadeth, Ministry, and one of my favorite bands of all time that I'm gonna be seeing live pretty soon, when this, uh, quarantine stuff is over. Machine Head. 
they did a song for this movie too, even before their first album was out. I mean, they started with Burn My Eyes, but Burn My Eyes wasn't even released when this movie came out. So I'm, if I ever get to interview one of the early bandmates that was in the band uh, during this movie, I want to ask them, how, how did they even get approached to do a song for Tales from the Crypt Demonite when they didn't even have the first album out? Uh, but yeah, I love that. And it's actually quite funny because on the VHS over here, it says, uh, featuring songs by Pantera, Megadeth, Ministry, Rollings, Band, and Great Diggaz. If only they knew Machine Head would get so big in the future, they would have probably had that one at least after Megadeth, because uh, Machine Head is way more successful than Ministry. Right? Right, it's gotta be. They gotta be more successful. I just checked on Spotify, Machine Head has uh, over a million, like a million and 200,000 listeners each month. And Ministry 500,000, so I guess I was right. I'm not hating on Ministry or anything. Trust me, I, I really like their songs too, but Machine Head is just better in my opinion. And if you don't agree, go fuck yourself. I'm just kidding, I'm not like that. That's rude. Agree to disagree, okay? Okay, so while editing, I realized that we can't shake hands right now, and anyone that wants to agree to disagree through a screen for some reason, uh, there's an elbow bump. USA Today's review on the back says frightfully engaging, handy with a clever and a cleaver. This is one crypt worth cracking open again. And I completely agree with them. Uh, because this is a crypt worth cracking open again. Because I've rewatched it so many times, it's so much fun. The opening scene alone is hilarious. John Cassir is just the director for a film. At first you're like, oh shit, they're not even gonna have the crypt keeper open up. He's just gonna start with horror right away, and then you realize it's it's a crypt keeper directing him his own movie, which is so smart. And then the movie ends off with uh, the crypt keeper at his big premiere, because uh, his movie is finally hitting the big screen. And uh, I think that's really funny too, because you have the crypt keeper in in like a suit and tie and stuff, which <laughs> that's such a sight to see, man. Really, I can't say uh, much else about Tales from the Crypt Demon Knight. Except I will give this movie 9.5 Dr. Peppers out of 10. Or should I give it a 9.5 Coca-Colas out of 10? I mean, that wouldn't really work. So 9.5 Dr. Peppers out of 10, it is. Thank you guys so much for watching. Tune in again next week when we'll be reviewing Bordello of Blood on the Dr. Pepper Diner and episode 2 of Tales from the Crypt Tuesday. See you guys next time. See ya. You're pissing me off, Roger. It's gonna be wild tonight.